Hey everybody, welcome back. Yes, we are in the cheapo zone once again. Hey, where would we rather be? In the hot seat today, the all new Van Lab VM600A for your cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. Big shout out to Van Lab. Thanks so much for sending the 600A in for this review. Van Lab, a new name in the multimeter genre. Are they any good? Well, hopefully after today's review, I'll have the answer. Or not. No, of course I will. Of course I will. So one thing that intrigued me about the Van Lab was the fact that the 600A is, mm, it's a big meter, it's a big one. I like them big. But uh, what, what's even more surprising is, are you ready for this? It's bigger than the Kiwi's HT-118E. It's actually bigger than the Kiwi's. <gasps> Let me just bring out a Kiwi's and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's not a huge difference, but it is nonetheless a tad bigger, just a tad, maybe about a half inch or so. But that being said, have this, uh, the Kiwi's is, is, is a big meter. So, hey, chunky, funky, it's gonna be fun. I thought, would it be fun to take out the good old digital caliper and measure the length of that uh, rotary selector switch? On the Kiwi's, we've got 38.79 millimeters. And for the Van Lab, look at that. It's bigger. It's bigger. 42.13, so just over 42 millimeters in diameter. Actually, 42 and a half. So even that selector switch is bigger, which means you're just gonna get have a better, a better grip. Oh, loving it. Ships in a pretty sweet looking box, black and blue. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, there's lots of jokes with that black and blue, but I'm not gonna go there today. Um, what do you get in the box? Well, first of all, the meter was enclosed in a pretty nice uh, plastic overlay here. So that's great. Keeps it from getting scratched and all that other fun stuff. We get this nice VenLab multimeter user manual. Look at that, all the specs, maintenance, warranty, what have you. Good stuff. I think this one is all in English. Actually, no, it's in Chinese as well. But uh, hey, good stuff nonetheless. Some pretty big sized test leads here as well. And Van Lab gives us four AAA batteries because it takes four of these bad boys to power the Van Lab. Finally, we get our thermocouple because yes, it does do temperature. And, oh, I love this. You get a couple of extra fuses. Now they're glass fuses, I know, but hey, get a couple of them. And by the way, they're six amp, 600 milliamp, 250 volt. So right off, if you're new to the world of multimeters, VanLab is really making sure that you have all the accoutrement required for your first sojourn into digital multimeter testing. Yeah, that sounded pretty good actually, didn't it? I know it's got that plastic overlay for the display, so let's just get rid of that, shall we? Oh yes, there we go. Nice, nice. First impressions fit and finish very, very nice. Uh, perhaps even a tad bit heavier than the Kiwi's, the 118E. Mm, I, I wanna make sure what I'm saying here is legit, so. <sighs> yeah, it is just a tad heavier than the Kiwi's. Um, has that nice rubber, rubberized boot as well, which does come off. And, and this is a big bonus, unlike the Kiwi's look at that, we have a nice magnetic overlay here on the rubber boot. So you can just stick it on your hood of your car, what have you. I like that idea. Every multimeter manufacturer should give us a magnet with our meters. I think it's a good idea. Also comes with that flashlight at the top and a nice protruding NCV indicator here, which I like. The uh, flashlight on the Kiwi's, as you can see, is a little more recessed, more uh, below, but uh, still nonetheless, very nice, very nice. Also, we have a really nice, good full-size tilt stand here. It doesn't go flopping around, easy to come up. Um, oh yeah, look at that. You can one hand this puppy all day long. Yes, yes, and yes. 
One Phillips screw does the trick. Look at that, we have a nice brass threaded insert for that battery holder. One, two, three, four, count them, four triple A's to power the VM, 600A. Um, overall, very, very nice. One thing I noticed is on the Kiwis, you have that nice slip recessed uh, area here, so you can put a, a multimeter strap on there to hang it up as well. But that's probably because it doesn't come on a freaking magnet. Um, no area here to insert a multimeter hanger, but once again, they are giving you a magnet. Something else worth mentioning too is the quality of the plastic. Very nice on that body. Um, you know, it's not taking fingerprints at all. And I gotta say, hmm. Really impressed uh, with my first impressions on this guy. Wasn't expecting much, to be honest. Wasn't expecting anything at all, but, uh, eh. Taking a closer look at the selector switch, starting at the off position. Millivolts, ACDC. Volts, ACDC. Diode, continuity and resistance. Capacitance, frequency. Microamps, ACDC. Milliamps, ACDC. Non-contact voltage. Finally, temperature in Celsius. Top of the meter in the far left, we have our function hold button. Beside that, we have our frequency as well as a delta or rel range. And finally, on the far right, our backlight as well as a flashlight. Bottom of the meter, we have four inputs. Far left, we have our milliamp or low current up to 600 milliamps. Beside that, we have a high current rated up to 20 amps, common or ground, and finally, our voltage, resistance, frequency, temperature, and capacitance. So yeah, this meter does have a lot of bells and whistles for the price. And speaking of price, not that expensive. I think like 25, 30 bucks US. So definitely in the cheaper realm. In terms of safety, uh, yeah, we don't have anything fancy, no uh, intertech, nothing like that. We do have our standard CE, but well, doesn't really mean much. So turning on that display, we have those big, bold fonts. Oh man, those are right in your face fonts. Enabling that backlight. And there you go. A Little bit of bleeding here on the left-hand side, but generally speaking, not a bad looking backlight. Um, seems to handle glare okay, no matter what angle you're at. Fairly, fairly viewable. Nice and big screen though. So if you've got uh, lazy eyes, uh, this will definitely be helpful. If you compare um, that to the Kiwis, oh, a little bit dusty here. Just, just get that dust out of the way. Um, you can see definitely smaller, chunkier. Still really do like that Kiwis font, but um, half the size of the Venlab. And remember, this is a 6,000 count display. Um, auto power off, yeah. These test probes are really nice and chunky, I like them. 1000 volts max, CAT2, uh, 20 amp rated, go figure. And a lot of nice, oh yeah, look at that, look at that. We have a lot of strain relief here. Mmm, loving it, loving it. Okay, uh, tips as well, very pointy. Anyway, these are nice test leads and they're long. Um, yeah, they're not uh, silicone per se, but the, uh, Attention to detail there is actually quite impressive. I'm liking it. Okay, let's start off things with our infamous DC precision reference voltage standard, courtesy of Fred Chu. Check out the purchase link in the description. Man, he makes some great precision voltage standards. All right, 10 volts. DC is what we want. Turn it on. And survey says, 9.99 volts. Now this was heating up originally for about 15 minutes. I just turned it off, turned it back on. So it is definitely warmed up. 9.99 volts, 6,000 counts of resolution. Oh yeah. Already 5.000 is what we want. 4.999 is what we get, definitely in spec. There you can see that 6,000 counts of resolution coming into play, that extra digit. Oh, very, very nice. By the way, that flashlight is uber bright. One of the brightest I've seen as of late. Very, very bright. And the nice thing is, uh, we... by the way, that flashlight is super bright. One of the brightest I've seen uh, in a while. Um, unfortunately, when you turn on the backlight, you enable the flashlight and vice versa. So you can't have one without the other, but uh, it is bright. Let's see how good the 600A is when it comes to reading LEDs and diodes. All right, starting off with that red LED. And look at that beauty, the green. There's our forward voltage drop and we have illumination, the yellow, 
Yes, we have a Ford Voltage Drop and it is illuminated, although it's really hard to see. The white, oh actually, it's the rainbow, the rainbow. And yeah, it's no problem there. The white, not an issue. The blue, look at that, five for five. Standard diode. Yes, so when it comes to diodes and LEDs, the 600A has you covered. Output voltage and dial mode is a balmy 3.2 volts. Plenty of juice. This week's shout out goes to Japan. Konnichiwa. Thanks for watching. Nice capacitance range on the uh, 600A, 6 nanofarad, all the way up to 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. Awesome. Uh, we're going to start off with a 47,000 microfarad. Let's see how well and how quickly it gets there. Here we go. It's thinking and it's thinking. Forty-seven thousand. There we go. Forty-two point seven four, and that is about right for this big electric. I just tested this with the uh, XL van. Coming in is ninety-six point six five with the Ven Lab. Here we go. And survey says. There we are, 98 millifarad. Awesome. Continuity's next standard stock default test leads. Three, two, one. Oh man. Hey, that's fast. Latched and loud. And look at that visual LED. Oh yeah, loving it. Let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Oh yeah. Oh man, that is fast. Latched and loud. Oh, yes. Seventy five point five decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Man, oh man, halfway through the review, and I've got to say, this is looking good. Um, is this an HT one eighteen killer? I don't know, but this is definitely uh, got some meat on these bones, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Looking at resistance, now we're going to start off with that 100 ohm resistor. Let's see how we do. Oh, that is awfully close. Definitely in spec, 100.4 ohm. Next up, we have a 0.5 ohm resistor, and a lot of multimeters have a trouble uh, with this range, but to Let's first check the resistance on these test leads. 0. Here we go, 0. 0.5 of an ohm. Oh yeah, 0. 0.5, spot on. Beauty. Gonna look at range speed now, sitting at one mega ohm, three mega ohm. 6 mega ohm, 10 mega ohm. Nice, nice. Let's try 100K, 300K, 600K, 1 mega ohm. Beauty, beauty. 110K, 310K, 610K. Oh, yeah. So this meter is fast to range. <laughs> Loving it. Looking at frequency right now, this goes up to 10 megahertz. Sitting at 5.5 uh, megahertz right now with a sine wave. Um, has an offset of zero millivolts and amplitude of 500 millivolts peak to peak. Okay, I'm just gonna go downwards. 4.5, 2.5, 1 1.5. Nice and fast, very little lag. Um, so far, this meter is doing it all. VinLab is equipped with an onboard sensor, so you don't have to use the thermocouple if you just want the ambient temperature. Sitting at 22 degrees Celsius right now. Let's take out the fluke. And coming in as 20.8, let's just try that again. 20.5, 20.6. So a little bit discrepancy compared to the fluke, but really nothing too 
monolithic. Uh, let's try that function switch and look at that. We have Fahrenheit as well as Celsius. So they are giving you both, even though the um, selector switch only says Celsius, you're actually getting Fahrenheit readings as well. Good stuff. In milliamp mode right now, the trusty old DC power supply. I've had this one forever and it's still going strong. Sitting at 360 milliamps, according to the DC power supply, coming in as 371. Now remember, this has a 600 milliamp threshold. 570 milliamps, 578 for the VIN lab. And 600, we are over that milliamp range with a high current alarm and uh, we just lost power. Oh, what happened to our Venlab? Let's see here. There we go, we're back in the saddle. And 260 milliamps, so we are good, we are good. So we have the nice high current uh, alarm once we hit the or exceed the 600 milliamp threshold. Let's just try that one more time. 550 milliamps, over. Oh yeah, so nice audible alarm, excellente. Okay, we're now looking at high current, sitting at uh, just under three amps, 2.9 amps, looking good for the Ven Lab. Let's just enable that backlight, shall we? And let's take it up, just over five amps, coming in as 4.988 amps. It's gonna be interesting to see if we have that high current alarm as well in the high current range. And there we go, yes we do, 10.2 amps, uh, excellente. And once again, we have that nice high current alarm letting us know that we are in the danger zone. Bring it back down. Now let's not forget this has a 20 amp, a 20 high current amp rating, whoa, unheard of. Can't go up any further than 10 on this Kiwi's power supply, but that's gonna be interesting to see whether or not this actually has a high uh, 20 amp fuse. So it's one thing to say you have a 20 amp rating, but another thing to actually see the dang fuse. Quick look at AC volts, here we go. 120 is what we wanna see. True RMS is what we have. And we are in DC volts. And there we are, 120.1, excellente. Non-contact voltage is next. Uh, this has an interesting two zone uh, signifier. So amber means it's definitely a hot zone and red means it is super hot. So here we go. And we are definitely in a hot zone. No trouble finding that AC power source right in the wall. Already tear down time. Starting off with the reverse side of the multimeter. Uh, no shielding. Oh, wow, well, that would have been awfully sweet. Um, there are the contacts for the battery housing. And that's what makes contact with the battery pads over here to power the meter. Other than that, nice quality ABS plastics here. Um, yeah, not much else going on. Inside the assembly there is where the batteries are being held. That's it, that's all. Now let's take a look at the PCB. Gorgeous, gorgeous looking PCB here. Where are we gonna start? Let's start at the very bottom of the input jacks themselves. Nice soldering going on through the split variety. One, two, three, four. And uh, once again, they have some really nice quality soldering going on. Nice thick blobs here. This is definitely gonna end, uh, stay in there for the long term. And guess what? Yes, it is a 20 amp, 250 volt fuse, glass fuse, but it is 20 amps. So they are definitely uh, doing the right thing, stating the uh, 20 amp uh, input for this meter uh, being protected by a 20 amp fuse the way it should be. Fab date 2022, April 22, 28B, oh yes. Right beside the high current fuse, we have a 600 milliamp, 250 volt glass fuse as well. And two PTCs on the voltage side. I'm not seeing any current shunt here, so it might be on the other side of this PCB. I'm, I'm assuming it is. We'll soon find out. Um, once again, those are the battery contacts. Uh, diode over here, probably for reverse input protection. Let's just bring it up a little bit. Number five. One, two, three, four, five diodes. We have a diode clamp going on here and they just wanted to make sure that they had five diodes or something like that. Um, 
look at that, we actually have a couple of through-hole components, a couple of uh, electrolytic capacitors at the top over here. Programmable headers for factory calibration. Over here we have our Cobbed IC, not some nice fancy schmancy 24-pin uh, flat package. No, it's Cobbed, but that's okay because over here, over here is a T24C08. Uh, that is the EEP ROM for the IC. That's what stores all the goodness. And uh, chances are, um, this would be a DreamTech IC. It's a great multimeter IC, by the way. Um, so you usually see them part and parcel together. Uh, yeah, so that's a good thing. Over here we have our um, crystal oscillator, four megahertz. And of course, these are the LEDs for the NCV and as well as the flashlight. Speaking of NCV, over here, nice protruding extrusion going right into the baseline of the meter. Just move it over here just a tad. So we have a pretty good quality uh, NCV output because of this nice metal filament. Check this out just before I flip this over. Look at that. Nice NCV is really extruding from the body of that assembly. I just took off the plastic housing and uh, yeah, very, very nice. Oh, that is excellent. Okay, we're gonna flip this over now. And bada boom, bada bing. There we go. Whoa, look at the dielectric on those rotary selector tracks. Man, oh man, that is a lot of dielectric. Excellent. So they've greased up this selector um, so you don't have to, whatever that means. No, that's going to really help with long-term wear and tear. There is that uh, current shunt hiding underneath right here, much better than one of those um, uh, current sensing resistors. Oh, much better indeed. Now to shout about here on this side, pretty clean, plain Jane looking good. Now let's take a look at the other end. And there is the display assembly over here. There's the Zebra Zdenio uh, Lastomar that makes contact with the uh, PCB to give us that wonderful, nice, big, bold display. And check out those tracks, one, two, three, four, five, six. And something I haven't seen, uh, check out the selector. So the entire assembly is embedded. You cannot remove this like a normal selector. So you're not gonna lose those balls and springs. So it's in that housing permanently, which I kind of like. Excellent. So some nice quality attention to detail here. Of course, we've got our soft touch buttons over here. Uh, generally speaking, very nicely done for the cheapo round. Okay, you're gonna put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Venlab VM600A, yes, yes, and yes. But hey, don't just take my word for it. Go out and buy one today. No, this is a very good multimeter. I didn't think the HT118E would have any competition, at least not so soon in the new year, but wow, competition it has. Has a really cool Huey Bluey going on as well. A nice change of pace from the standard black that we're so used to seeing. I really like this blue. Doesn't have the fancy color-coded inputs that you get with the Kaiweets uh, HT118E, for example, but, and I will say but, you do have that nice 20 amp rating with the supplied 20 amp fuse. And on top of that, the two fuses they give you, the extra fuses are both 600 milliamp. So that is always a bonus because chances are you're gonna burn those out sooner rather than later. The VM600 a performed admirably in every single test I threw at it. It did not flunk on anything, which is a far cry from most multimeters today. Honestly, I'm thinking, is there anything I don't like about this meter? Absolutely none. What would I like to see? I'd love to see a dual display. I wish they could have put just a little bit more info on this big, bold display. But heads, it is what it is. And a max min, hey, that would have been a bonus as well. The rel, by the way, is only for capacitance, not for uh, resistance. Just take note of that. Hey, this is a great multimeter through and through and priced to sell. I mean, this thing is a giveaway at 25 to $30 US, around 35 Canadian. Hey, if you're looking for a brand new multimeter or a second multimeter or a third or a fourth, you get the idea. The Venlab BM600A is definitely Darren Walker approved. The Venlab BM600A gets a solid 4.5 out of five stars. Yes, this is one heck 
of a Maltinator. Thanks for watching this review, everybody! To the next one. Keep on testing. First of all, big shout out, baby, baby, baby. Big shout out to Venla. Thanks. Ships in a pretty sweet looking block. Blocks. Just tested with. Continuity time. Here we go. Standard stock. Default test probes. Three, two, one. And we're not in continuity. Oh, God. I hate it when they do that. Ah. Uh.